everybody, it's Guru Amin, and I'd like to address a very important question that a lot of younger bodybuilders and fitness and physique enthusiasts are asking me, and that is, when is the right time to take gear? And I want to address this from the perspective of somebody who has taken gear at a young age and may uh, may not think that it's the best thing to do in a situation for other people. So I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm just saying that I've learned through my years and if I could do things differently, I would. The very first thing that you have to understand when it comes to lifting weights, and I would say before you even venture into exercise, is you have to have good nutrition. Now, when I grew up, there was a certain degree of good nutrition, and it was kind of understood if you ate at home, uh, if your family cooked for you, or you had good meals at home, then you had pretty decent nutrition, so then training would have been the core of it. But nowadays, I'm finding more often that people don't even have basic understanding of nutrition and as a result of that what ends up happening is people go to the gym and they end up losing uh, losing the ability to recover right off the bat over training right off the bat and then they can't even go further with their exercise so if you're gonna start off wanting to get into exercise you have to already have an understanding of nutrition. And that would be at least feed your body multiple times a day. Um, I would say between, if, you, if, you're, if you're just starting exercise and you're coming from no exercise, four meals a day. And then from once you start into training, you add in a post-workout shake and then maybe another shake too. So that's two shakes and four meals. And then you can can maybe add in another meal on top of that within a couple months time. So gradually increasing your calories as you increase your training. But understanding that, you know, without the food, there is nothing. There is nothing without the food. So the very, very cornerstone of building muscle has to do with nutrition. And it's so important that even if you don't lift weights, you have to have good nutrition because if you don't have good nutrition and you don't lift weights, okay, you're still going to have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and all the other things that happen from eating, you know, diabetes, possibly from having bad food choices and poor diet. So nutrition is the most important thing. Now, with that being said, that a minimum of three good meals and two shakes I prefer four meals and one shake, but regardless, three meals, at least three meals and one shake going into the gym. Now, training is your next pillar when it comes to what are you gonna do and when are you gonna decide to take gear. You wanna first get nutrition down and then the next step you have to talk about training. So training. And I know this may sound a little bit extreme, but when you talk about taking a needle and putting it in your butt or your shoulder or taking pills that could be toxic or, or having to say that your social life is going to be different than, you know, the majority of your peers, and that's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when we rationalize our behaviors, we have to understand that the, the means must outweigh the end. So... If you're going to do this, it has to be beneficial for you. You shouldn't accept doing this if you know it's going to take years off your life. So, with that being said, we want to get everything we can out of bodybuilding before we start talking about gear. Now, when it comes to training, I recommend starting off with high volume training, but extensive warm-ups. And I do recommend that you do cardio at least three times a week for 
30 to 45 minutes, at, at, at least three times a week for 30 to 45 minutes. So it's a minimum of 33 times a week and up to 45 is still the minimum. Okay, you could do cardio 45 minutes every day. It's only going to be beneficial. And if you can digest your food well and you can eat the number of calories that you need to eat without stressing your digestive system, again, going back to step one, then you can make gains. Okay, and I want to emphasize before we start talking about training one more thing about step one you need to know your food allergies, you need to know your food intolerances. You have to understand what type of foods give you gas. You have to understand if whey proteins are not good for you. You have to understand if vegetables increased are better with your protein digested together, okay? I found that certain things work better for me and the majority of clients that I've worked with, and there's ratios and balances of food. So for some people, they think that just eating the same amount of food every meal is going to be adequate and for some people with good genetics that is however you don't want to overstress your body you don't want to overstress your kidneys Get out of sleep. because if you do then you're not going to grow as much your body's going to have to focus on getting rid of uric acid and other things from the high protein diet and excessive protein that's not needed okay so there's a lot of people that think that if they just simply shove food in their mouth, they're going to grow by just drinking lots of high calorie shakes. There's a lot of coaches out there that do that themselves and they believe in it and that's great. But the fact is, is that you overstress your digestive system and it leads to unnecessary water weight gain. And it's undeniable when people gain a large amount of weight, they, in the bodybuilding world, the numbers mean everything. But the reality is when you diet down, you find out how much of it was real and how much of it wasn't, you see that excessing, excessive amounts of protein shakes, excessive amount of liquid calories, they're not really beneficial because you can only absorb so much of that liquid and make use of it at one period of time. So maybe if it was trickled out throughout the day, that would be beneficial, but an overwhelming amount of liquid calories will not work. Understanding step one before you even go to training step two means you have to know when your body needs carbs and when you don't need so much carbs. You also have to understand that you can only eat so much food at once. So you may need more carbs with the meal and less protein or more protein with the meal and more fat and less carbs. Some people when they train, and I, I'm an advocate of this, to go more protein, more uh, fat and fibrous carbs, vegetables, before the workout because that's going to be what's basically going to be readily available as nitrogen post-workout, okay? Now, post-workout, quick protein like wave isolate with some fructose, some berries or a little bit of honey or, you know, whatever you want. Everybody has their own uh, favorites. Okay, you should find these out. And then shortly after that, eating again. Okay, so, you know, very, very quick protein, very, very quick sugar post-workout immediately after the workout to kind of allow some quick nutrition to get in there. And then when your body's readily, uh, normally going to increase protein synthesis about an hour or so after the workout, you already have a meal ready e eating. You're already eating that meal. So that's how I like to do it. Now, taking that, all those things into consideration, Understanding what gives you bloating and what doesn't so that you can have a good digestion and you can eat frequently without overeating also and without eating too many liquid calories. Now we go to step two, training. 